Good evening and welcome to worship at St. Barnabas as we celebrate Thanksgiving. This evening we are doing a prayer book service, which means you'll be juggling that blue hymnal and the red book of common prayer. All the page numbers are listed on the one page bulletin. We continue our worship this evening with hymn 290 in the blue hymnal. Please stand as you're able for the cross. If you're, joining us on, if you're joining us on Facebook Live, go ahead and put a comment into the comment section of Facebook Live, letting us know where you're worshiping from. Our worship continues either on your screen or page 355 of that Red Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. On the next page, please join in saying the Gloria. Glory, Glory to, God to God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Lord God, heavenly King, King, Almighty God and Father, 
We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Father, we give you thanks for the fruits of the earth in their season and for the labors of those who harvest them. Make us, we pray, faithful stewards of your great bounty for the provision of our necessities and the relief of all who are in need. To the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number. And there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power, and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the crowd found Jesus on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the man in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. 
Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Holy Spirit, come and fill this place, and fill our homes, and fill us. Amen. Amen. How many of you have read the Winnie the Pooh books by A.A. A. Milne, or seen any of the Winnie the Pooh videos on Disney? Some of you. In these stories, the main character is Pooh Bear. But there's another character also named Eeyore. Eeyore is a pessimistic, gloomy, depressed, old, gray, stuffed donkey. Eeyore is, uh, Eeyore is often depicted with a rain cloud over his head because things are always going wrong for him. He complains a lot and seems to have a sense of emptiness in his life. Now, I have had extended periods of time in my own life in which I felt empty. There are times when I felt like Eeyore. And I then, in those times, had become obsessed with some meaningless goal that seemed so important. The obsession seemed so important because I can't stand that empty feeling. Today's message is for you if you sometimes feel you are an Eeyore or that you might live with one. As Christians, we have a cure for this empty feeling to life, and it's very simple. You can't be an Eeyore and be thankful at the same time. It is impossible. I've shared this message before, and I think it's important for us to hear it again. You can't feel empty and be thankful at the same time. I first heard this message several years ago when I was going through my divorce. It was a time filled with gloom, and I was in a funk. I had become Eeyore, and I was so intrigued when I heard this message about moving from emptiness to joy. So today, as we celebrate Thanksgiving, I want us to look at this link between being thankful to, to God and having joy. Now, we live in a culture today that focuses on happiness. If you ask most people what they want most, they respond by saying they want their children or grandchildren to be happy. Happiness has become our goal. However, I want to suggest to you today that the goal for Christians is not happiness. Our goal is joy. I'm talking about the joy, that joy that satisfies the deepest hunger in our souls. That joy is so hard to find in our culture today, and we need to shift from a secular goal of happiness to a Christian goal of joy. Often it's not easy to change our focus. The media inundates us each day. We have complaints and if-onlys. However, we can change to joy if we listen to the words of the Apostle Paul that was in one of this evening's readings. And we count our blessings rather than our promises. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul understands the link between being thankful and finding joy, and he wants us to have that joy. For you see, giving thanks leads to joy because our focus is redirected from our problems to our blessings. Kind of obvious, isn't it? Few understand that joy is a byproduct. It's a byproduct of gratitude and contentment for the blessings that God has already provided. And it runs head on with the myth in our culture that happiness is somehow connected to getting what we want in the future. Secular happiness is when we fulfill our wish list or we wait for our if onlys. John Lennon said, life is what happens to you when you're busy making other plans. Many of us are waiting in order to be happy. So life and joy never really happen. And that is a tragedy. That is why even though this link between gratitude and joy is so simple, it's also so profound. Joy happens when we live in a continual state of gratitude as indicated in today's psalm. Be joyful in the Lord, all you land. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. We are to be grateful to God and the time to be thankful is now. Not at some future time when we receive that something that we think will free us to be joyful. Too many of us are caught up in the 21st century American myth that focuses on problems and wants and greed and fears. And it is a myth that robs us of joy. God would have us know today that joy. Henry Nouwen puts it so well, to be grateful for the good things that happen in our lives is easy, but to be grateful for all our lives, the good as well as the bad, the moments of joy as well as the moments of sorrow, the successes as well as the failures, the rewards as well as the rejections. That requires hard spiritual work. When Christians choose to count blessings rather than problems and unmet desires, we are going to find this soul-filling joy that can be ours today. Particular, particularly today as we walk out into a frightened world where so many people have lost their smile and their hope. I believe that gratitude is one of the best coping mechanisms for these times, and I give it to you as a choice to accept. Now, one spiritual practice that can help us is a gratitude list. I know the biggest thing to be thankful for is the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Our list would be complete if we just were thankful for Jesus. But I want to extend this list to help your creative juices about getting thankful. Here are some other possible things to add to your thank list. Falling in love. Thank you. Hearing the heater come on in the middle of a cold winter's night. Thank you. Or the air conditioner come on in the midst of a very warm day. A warm shower without a water restrictor. Lying in bed listening to the rain outside. The first sip of coffee or tea in the morning. And having someone tell you that you are beautiful. Or accidentally overhearing someone say something rather nice about you waking up and realizing that you have a few hours left to sleep. Thank you. Or watching the sunrise. We must remove ourselves from only thinking about wealth and remember all the ways that God has already showered us with blessings. So do you want to banish a sense of emptiness? 
Does someone in your life need a good jolt of joy? There are so many things to thank God for if we just take the time to look and think. Look for the good signs and then say, thank you, God. And while you're at it, say thank you to a person who has blessed your life. Go out and thank someone. When we finally understand that every good and perfect gift comes down to us from a very generous God, when we understand this, then it will change our lives and we will find that soul-filling joy. When we stop focusing on wealth, we leave behind the cause of so much emptiness. And we can start being thankful today, not tomorrow. I am happy to say that a thankful heart transforms gloomy, empty Eeyores into contagious, joyous Christians. Please stand as you are able and turn in your Red Book of Common Prayer to page 358 and let us say together the statement of Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. Our prayers of the people are Form 1, which is on page 383. With all our hearts and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Bishop Lucinda, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our President Joseph, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, Arroyo Grande, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In, communion of, in the communion of St. Barnabas and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord our God. Almighty God, whose loving hand has given us all that we possess, grant us grace that we may honor you with our substance and may be faithful stewards of your bounty through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now turning back to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we will repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share peace with one another. Peace. Peace. And if you're on Facebook Live, go ahead and put the word peace or some other appropriate word into the comment section of Facebook Live. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. You may be seated.
Eucharistic Prayer A is on your screen or on page 361 of the Red Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life, and you made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and dark angels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ, is Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, all are welcomed at God's table. This evening we don't have ushers, so I would ask that we'll serve the choir first, followed by those here on the floor.
communion prayers on page 365 of the Red Book of Common Prayer. Please stand as you're able. <clears throat> Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. 
Through Christ Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. With joyous, grateful hearts, let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.